Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Talk About Sleep. Here's the book. Get this on Amazon. Link is in the description box down below. As we get to 1,000, one person, one viewer at random will get a signed copy of this, but you got to be in it to win it, so make sure you subscribe. If you like this video, please click like. Please share it with your friends and family. If there's any questions or comments about this or anything, leave them in the comment section below. Once a month, I will answer any and all uh, questions and comments in a video format. So, and as I always say, these videos are for education only. Today's topic is a corollary to the last video, which was delayed sleep phase. This is advanced sleep phase, okay? And just like with delayed sleep phase, I urge you to watch that. Your clock is set too late. With advanced sleep phase, your clock is set too early. Delayed sleep phase, you tend to see that a lot in like teenagers who often have a delayed timing anyway, right? But that's really when it becomes most prominent. Advanced sleep phase, you tend to see that in a lot of older people, okay? And how does that work? Well, like I said before, I'm going to go through this quickly because the previous video had it, but the, the normal person, let's say, goes to bed at 11 p.m., wakes up at 7, right? Somebody who has a circadian rhythm problem, which is an advanced or delayed sleep phase, their clock does not, is not set in that window. So somebody who's delayed, they may not want to fall asleep until 4 a.m., Okay, and get up at 11 or 12. Somebody with advanced sleep phase, it's the opposite. So they want to go to bed at 6 p.m., right? Now, this is not as much of a problem as delayed sleep phase because you know, presumably if they're working, they're done with work. But what it does, though, is it impacts their social life, right? Because most of people's friends and family and whatever are not asleep at 6 p.m. So what we do in a case like this is just like with delayed sleep phase, we use light, right? Bright light. Now, depending on what you read, you may hear different things, but what um, what's kind of most current is anywhere between 2,500 to 10,000 lux. That's a, a measure of how bright the light is. You use that, or you have the patient use that around the time that they would get sleepy. So let's say it's 6 o'clock. So they have their dinner or whatever, 6 p.m., they have this bright light use, and use it for about an hour, okay? And what that's going to do, it's they, they not staring at it, okay, but let's say they're reading. Right, or they're or they're on a computer, they have the bright light kind of right above the monitor, so it's on their face, okay, without them directly staring at it, for at least an hour or so, okay. And what that does is the bright light shuts off melatonin. So what it what it's doing is basically shutting off the break, if you will. So ideally, what's happening here, it gives the person a burst of energy, and it prevents them from falling asleep for the next uh, you know, couple hours or so until they have a more appropriate bedtime. You know, what's, what's written here in the literature, it's usually about an hour or two uh, for the light. Um, sitting at about one to two feet, okay? Um, yeah, people, people can do it from one, two, three hours or so. It's about a foot or two away from their face. Ideally, one that filters out UV light would be helpful. Okay, again, because that can, that can damage the eyes. But again, you're not staring at it. The, the light is coming on while the person is doing other things. Okay? It is treatable. Like I said, it, I don't think it's as big of a problem, and it's not nearly as common as, as delayed sleep phase, but it is out there. With all these things, genetic, there's a genetic component to it, so just be aware of that. Okay? Like, with delayed sleep phase, people get misdiagnosis insomnia, right? With advanced sleep phase, people can be, get misdiagnosed as having like uh, narcolepsy or idiopathic hypersomnia. You know, I have videos on those where somebody is sleepy in the daytime. Okay, so um, so that's the story for for this. You know, like I said, this is not as big of a problem as the late sleep phases, but it is out there. So, if there's any questions on this topic or anything or anything in the circadian rhythm um, misalignments, you know, jet lag being another one. Please leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, sleep well.